In this video, we'll be talking about getting stuck in a creative rut or what uh, the person who proposed this, Brian, said is uh, musical or creative constipation, which I think is a pretty cool and slightly gross term. But what we'll be talking about is we'll be going through 10 tips and probably more because we've got folks here live that will join in, but a bunch of tips to help you get out of your creative rut to get creating music to start doing things again. So we'll jump into that in just a moment, but if it's your first time here, who am I? What is this? My name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record, and release your best music. So if you are stuck in a creative rut, obviously you're not creating, you're not recording, you're not releasing. How do you get back into the swing of things? That's what we're going to be talking about here today. It's an important thing, and uh, I hope that uh, you can join me for this next uh, few minutes. As you know, professional live streamer here, I'm playing my own live stream in the background. That was a bit weird. All righty. Now, hello to those who are here live. We did have a hitch. We are uh, officially 12 minutes late to start the live stream here. So thank you for your patience. It uh, means a lot to me that you're hanging out here. Now, if you are here live and you've got your own tips, what I want you to do is put tip in big capitals and then put your tip. And what I'll do is once I go through all the tips I have here, I'm going to return to the folks that are here live and we'll go through any of them. If you're watching on the replay, no problem. You can just leave your comment on this video. And if you get some value out of this one today, if you find it interesting, if you get some tips that are going to help you, then hit the like button. That just lets me know that these are the sort of videos that are going to help you create some more music. Hello to everyone that we have here in the live chat. We've got Aramis we've got Earthling Llamas here, Harry McLaughlin, Brian Zimmerman, Jeff Turner, uh, Alex Cruz is here, Tyler Dozier. Uh, we've got uh, yeah a bunch of folks here that are all having a chat. So thank you for coming along to the stream today. Now, Brian, who is here in the stream, he is one of my patrons over on patreon.com slash Pete Johns. Yes, had to throw the plug in there. And Brian actually uh, supports me on Patreon and the tier that he's subscribed to gives you access to an email address, which is my video ideas email address. So uh, he sent me a, an email during the week saying, uh, it would be really cool to see a video where we go through, what do you do when you're in a creative rut? What do you do when you can't create music or you've got writer's block or you just can't get things out the door? What do you actually do? And I went, Brian, that's a great idea. That's this week's live stream. And Brian's here on the stream as well. So hello to you. Thank you for joining me. So what I'm going to do now is I've actually got a bunch of my own tips. I've reached out to my community here on YouTube. They've got a bunch of tips as well. And we're going to dive into these and get started. As I said, I think I've now got 13. I started with 10 and it's just grown through the week. So we're going to go through all of those right now. So tip number one, let's jump in. My tip number one is to collaborate with other musicians. So I'm part of a lot of different groups, a lot of Facebook groups. I'm active on the GarageBand Reddit community. We have our own Studio Live Today community right here on YouTube as well. And the beauty part is that a lot of folks collaborate with me. They'll send me their tracks. I'll get to listen to them. I'll get to provide feedback and input into those. That really helps motivate and inspire me to create more. And then I've actually also been lucky enough to actually collaborate on songs with a bunch of those folks. So whether it's doing original songs or doing cover songs, which we'll talk about a bit more later, there's a lot of options that you can actually have to do things differently, to try new things. And you might collaborate with an artist who's a different musical style to you or bring something very different to the music than what you bring. And that's something that's super cool. So consider that, that if you're not, if you're doing things, if you're in your audio cave, like I am by yourself, a lot of the time, consider actually getting out of your comfort zone, collaborating with other folks and actually getting into your own collaborations. So that's tip number one. Tip number two. For tip number two, I need to get a prop. One moment. I need to grab my guitar. So tip number two, let's just make sure you can hear my guitar. Tip number two is about not playing the same chord progression every time. Now, because I'm a guitarist, I actually gravitate towards the key of G. I love playing me some, some G, D, C, G. So that's my jam. And whenever I'm writing a song, I'll just pick up and I'll just instantly start playing Gs and Ds and Cs. And then I also love a... I love a bit of a B7 and a E, a resolve there. So that's a key that I play and I write a lot in. But what I've found lately is I got a lot of inspiration from not playing that same chord progression. And Seth Flower, who's one of my subscribers here, actually said the same thing. And he said, just completely change it up. So what I've been doing lately is I'm like, let's write something just in F. Don't play that chord. 
So if you're playing something in a completely different key, and the reason I don't like some keys is it's harder to play the chords. But that's where, I don't have my capo, but that's where if you have a capo on your guitar, just shift it up and down the neck, play some different things, or, you know, nothing wrong with... Going back into, uh, going back into C major. It works for a lot of good songs. There's a lot of songs in C. So, yes, play something different. Mix it up. Play different chord progressions that you don't usually play. Um, this probably relates to... I'm going to skip through to number six. And I've gone from number two to number six. But using a different instrument is really cool. So if you've got a guitar, if you're a guitarist like me, and you spend a lot of time on guitar, what might be a good idea, you can't see it behind my big head... Yes, you can see them over there. I've got my keyboards there. So what I do is if I'm stuck in a creative rut and I'm just, I pick up my guitar and I'm like, oh, I just can't do anything, is I'll go and grab a keyboard and play it. Now, look, I know not everyone has access to every different uh, instrument, but the good thing is that if you're using, you know, if you're using GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad, you've actually got access to a bunch of different instruments. You can use virtual instruments. So you can start writing songs using uh, violins or cellos or, um, or bass, like grab a bass guitar, use a synth sample, use a, a loop, like it doesn't actually matter. You, you can just get out of that zone by doing something completely different. It's related to some other things that I'm going to talk about here later. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the guitar down or I'm going to get super distracted and just start randomly playing instead of talking to you. So that's sort of tip number six, although it's the third one there. Number three, four, I'm getting way out of ordering here. Uh, that's okay. Number next is to, uh, this is a really fun one actually. And this is something that I've done a bunch of times is to deliberately play and deliberately write the worst possible song that you can write of, that you can write, that you can think of. So I love this tip because it gives you 100% creative freedom. It lets you get completely out of your comfort zone. And it lets you just do something totally fun. So I've written like some really bad rap songs. Um, I wrote a song about chickens one time. I wrote a song about goats. That actually turned out to be a pretty good song in the end. So sometimes your bad songs can actually become good. You'll write something and be like, hey, there's a little piece of that that I'm actually really enjoying. I'm going to I'm gonna continue pushing with this one. So yeah, if you're stuck in a rut, don't go, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm everything I write is bad. Embrace that go this is pretty bad but I reckon I can make it super cheesy write an 80s hair metal song write something that is not your usual style that's not necessarily going to be good and you don't have to share it with anyone I know I always say create record released uh, but you don't have to release everything sometimes you just need to do the creating sometimes you're just going to be songwriting sometimes you're just going to be randomly recording things and sometimes you're going to be making things worthy of being released so do that as well all right um, so that is the, the next tip. <laughs> yes. Tip number next. So, um, the next one I'm going to have here is, uh, to do what I call an eight bar challenge. I did this recently, uh, with the, the, gr the group over on GarageBand users, the Facebook group that I'm a part of, and it went really well. So an eight bar challenge is something that is, you do eight bars. So you do eight bars, you do eight tracks and you limited to that. So limitations really help you. So limitations mean that you go, okay, instead of having this complete blank canvas, I'm going to restrict myself. And you might say, restricting people, we're creatives, we need freedom, we need the creative freedom. No, restriction can actually really help you, especially if you're stuck in a rut, especially if you have that creative constipation, what you need to do is just find a way to get out of it. So grab yourself eight bars and all you have to write is eight bars and limit yourself to eight tracks if you're recording and just see what you can do. See how creative you can be. See what you can do with eight bars and eight tracks. And I wrote a song. Uh, I'll try and find it at some stage during the stream and I'll play that along. Uh, but yeah, I, I wrote an eight bar song. A bunch of the folks over on GarageBand users did. And in fact, uh, I have plans to do an eight bar challenge here on Studio Live today. So if that sounds like something cool to you, uh, drop a comment uh, in this video. Just say eight bar challenge, yes, or eight bar challenge, I'm in. And uh, we'll get that happening. Because I think that would be super cool to see what you can produce in eight bars and eight tracks. All right, number next one, uh, we'll call it six because it is number six, <laughs> is to get someone to give you a spark for your song. So get someone, just say to someone, I'm writing a song, give me a topic. I'm writing a song, give me a key signature, give me a BPM for my song. Uh, just give me an instrument that I need to use. Uh, give me a, a theme that it needs to be around. So by, because the problem is you're stuck in your own head. You're trying to push your way out. I'm saying use other people around you. So use someone else that you, you're collaborating with, your mum, your brother, your friends, it doesn't matter. But go in there and actually say, 
hey, what is, what can I do here? Um, what is going, like, what, what, what can I actually create? Just get someone else's help to do that and you'll be good to go. Uh, so that would be cool. I just need to uh, quickly do some, uh, we're just going to jump in and uh, hide a particular user. Uh, if you're on the live stream here, 99% of you are doing a great job um, and uh, doing the nice things and uh, making sure that you uh, are being nice and behaving. But uh, if you don't behave, uh, you'll get uh, you'll get hidden and blocked uh, pretty much immediately because we're, we're here to make music, we're here to share. Anyway, I hate to do the school teacher thing and have to go, sorry, uh, I just need to discipline one person and then I'll get right back to you. Uh, let's continue on. Oh, by the way, Song Spark, if you want uh, a more formalized way, I highly recommend the Song Spark collective over on facebook just go to facebook and search song spark collective it's a group of folks uh we get together there's one spark for everyone every month and you write a song based on that spark it's a really cool way to just engage and to get out of that rut because yeah again if you just have to think of everything yeah you have to do it all if you get something that's finite it gives you a goal gives you something to create towards which i think is really really cool Alrighty, uh, so we're, we're about halfway in here. I'm going to jump over and start talking about some of the tips that I've got uh, through uh, through the folks here on my YouTube channel. Uh, but let's have a quick chat and see who we've got. Uh, eight bar challenge. Yes. <laughs> What's the eight bar challenge? Yeah. Well, I, I just spoke about that. So hopefully that helped you out. Uh, <laughs> and Aaron Macias says, me, I am the eight bar challenge. Good stuff. Uh, hello to a few other folks who made along here. Goth Demon 666 is here. Uh, we've got Valium F. M. Uh, Brian Zimmerman says, I definitely miss collaboration, went from band to solo. Yeah, that, that is definitely something that I've done. And I think it's, it's really, we're in the future here. We're in a really good time because you can collaborate virtually. You don't actually have to. I mean, it's great if you can play music with other people, you can play in bands, but you can actually collaborate. We'll hit the mic down. Everyone drink. Uh, you can actually collaborate virtually and it's easier than ever with the tools that we have. You can share your files, you can share your stems of your song files, your whole projects, and you can collaborate. So my, my current video that I just released yesterday, last night or this morning for some of you, uh, is a collaboration I'm doing with an artist called Jade Starr. She's amazing. And she did the instrumentation for a cover version of the Ben Folds song, Smoke. I'm now recording some vocals. She's going to record some vocals. It's going to be a, a du duet collaboration there. And, you know, we couldn't really do this if it was 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, just wouldn't work. She's in Melbourne. I'm here in Adelaide. We're not in the same location, but we can collaborate. So agree with you. Yes, uh, Brian, if you're missing the, the collaboration side, then make sure that, yeah, you, you reach out and start, uh, start creating and start uh, tapping in with other people. It's really, really cool. Um, Lama says for make a song, I find acapellas for looper man and collaborate with someone's acapella. Yeah, cool. Uh, acapella is cool. And I love uh, what I like to do is to actually, um, to just create a song with just your voice. And when I say that, it means, um, just grab uh, your voice recorder or grab garage band or whatever you use. And instead of having to work out how to play things, cause you probably got tunes in your head, what you can do is just actually verbalize those into your microphone. So just go, you got, I got an idea. It go do, 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 do. And then, you know, you don't have to work out what chords or what notes they are. Just play that with your voice. Get the idea down. You can then workshop it later. But don't be sitting around waiting going, oh, I've got to work out how to play this. Get it while it's fresh in your head. So that can really work well in my experience. Uh, okay, let's continue on here. Hey, Pete, a bit of rain overnight. Absolutely. Jeff Turner, uh, I think you're in here in Adelaide. Yes, we did have a lot of rain last night. Uh, Goss Demon 666, I miss collaboration as well. I also miss collaboration. Andrew Graham. Now that you said that it's good to collaborate with other musicians, do you think you can ooh, do a lead guitar solo over one of my songs if I dropped? If you could, I would be thankful. Uh, yeah, so if you if you do, like, hit me up. Um, I'm available on my email address. It's in the description of every video that I release. So, yeah, shoot me an email. Uh, you can jump onto my email list if you go over to studiolivetoday.com. So join up with the email list there and you can uh, interact with me as well. I'm also pretty heavily active on Facebook, so there's plenty of places where I am. A little limited on time, so if there's big projects that you want me to work on, uh, we can talk about that. But uh, yeah, occasionally I'll, I'll have the time, and if I've got the skills to help folks out, uh, I will definitely do my best to try. Alrighty, let's jump back in uh, to, oh sorry, Omar Torres, hello to you, I'm looking to start my own band in the future, definitely, uh, playing in bands is cool, there's nothing quite that replaces that human, human playing music, very cool. 
let's continue on here. So what else do we have in the list here? Now, I've, uh, as I said, I've reached out to a few different folks. Uh, Gino Therese, who's not here on the stream, but often is, uh, he, he mentioned using a different instrument. So I've already mentioned that, but uh, if you're a guitarist, grab a keyboard, use your loops, use your samples, download a beat and rap over it. Like, I don't care. Just do something to get out of your comfort zone. A few folks actually said something similar. So I'm going to group these together as number I've forgotten again. Uh, so Lerma Beats and Gino Therese again said, be, so Lerma Beats said, be inspired by your favorite producers. So if you are, if you're into EDM, electronic music and other produced music, then yet yeah, listen to your favorite producers and see what they're doing and see if you get some inspiration from them. And uh, Gino said, listen to music that inspires you. So he uh, mentioned Nirvana and Elliot Smith two artists that I definitely am inspired by and have been in the past. And he mentioned a band called Copeland, which I've not heard of. And uh, he said I should check them out. So I may have to do that, Gino. I do like listening to new music that I've not listened to before. Uh, Lerma Beats also said try out different keyboards, test different sounds and experiment. Yeah. So that is a very cool idea, especially if you're a singer-songwriter, if you're like me. So for a while there, I was like, everything I produced was my acoustic guitar and I just played straight out like that. I just went, yep. Every song basically started sounding the same because it was all based around my acoustic guitar and my vocals. And then I'd build it out. I'd add some piano, I'd add some percussion, etc. Uh, what I did recently, again, when I was stuck in a bit of a rut is I grabbed, I won't grab it because I'll have to leave, but I've got a bass guitar over there. An old, it was literally like about $50 from a secondhand shop. It's not a great bass, but it's a great bass because I play it. It creates a cool bass sound and I use it in my songs. So I grabbed my bass and I'm like, I'm going to write a song using just my bass guitar for all of the parts. In fact, uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I can actually bring it up here. I'm just going to go to my SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Pete Johns, uh, to see if I can actually find this track. Because uh, what I'll do is I'll play this one because it's, uh, it's interesting in that I, I just... I had an idea and I'm like, here's the concept. Here's the riff that was in my head. Again, I was like, duh, 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 duh. I was playing this riff in my head and then I wanted to actually go, huh, I wonder, I wonder what this would sound like if I just play this all on my bass guitar. So I wanted to do that. Uh, let's find out if I've got the right song here. I think it is this one. I could be wrong. Uh, let's hit play. Not a matter of opinion. It's not a case of right or wrong. You chose to speak your mind. Yeah, so that is what I did there. Like very different to the sort of songs I usually produce. So why was it so different? Because instead of being acoustic guitar driven or even guitar driven, it was driven 100% by the bass riff. And then funnily enough, I, I was so lazy that I didn't even unplug my bass to plug in my guitar to play the lead part and the solo part. I just uh, used the bass. I just played it up on the on the high string and then uh, pitch shifted it up an octave to make it sound like an electric guitar. So yeah, that's laziness. But I would say not lazy, creative, right? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Uh, it's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, alrighty, let's continue on here. We've got a few more tips to get through here in the show. Uh, so Gino Therese made another great point here in, uh, in the, the chat and that was to get away from music. Now this sounds weird. Like, how do you get created? How do you get inspired to create music and to create more? Uh, if you've got a, if you're stuck in a rut, uh, stop creating music. You go, um, is that really the best advice? Well, it is. Uh, and the reason is that sometimes you just get completely stuck. Like sometimes you just you're trying and you're forcing it. Have you ever been in that phase where you're like forcing it and it's just it's not coming out. It's sounding horrible. Again, musical constipation. It's sounding horrible. Sometimes instead of continuing, the best thing is to literally do something completely different. For me, I go for a lot of walks, so I will just throw some music on, so there is music related, or I'll listen to an audiobook actually, or sometimes a podcast, and I'll just go and walk for an hour. So I'll just get out of this audio cave that I'm stuck in here, and I'll just go for a walk for an hour. What happens usually halfway through that walk is I start getting ideas in my head. I'm not doing anything music related. I'm walking around, I'm yeah, listening to, to a podcast, and then I'll go, hey, I got an idea. Let's do this. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll grab my phone. I'll put it, the idea into GarageBand. I'll grab my voice recorder. I'll just throw it down. I get back to the studio 
studio. It's my front room. Let's be honest. Let's not uh, let's not get too excited. Uh, I get back to my front room here and I sit down and I've got some musical ideas. So what if I'd sat down and just tried to force it out for the next hour, wouldn't have got that creativity. So do that. For some people, it's video games. For some people, go and have a coffee, like go to the local cafe and sit there and people watch for an hour. Don't care what you do. Just do something that's going to get you out of that zone. And similar and related to that, so Akita Kamasari uh, made this comment, which is to take, he likes to get out, similarly, go outside, take in the environment, look at the skies, look at the weather, look at the surroundings. Uh, if there's a flashing traffic light as a metronome, like you could just sort of, you know, you know, when you're crossing, you're like, bip, 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 bip. You just like, you start sort of clicking your fingers and tapping and doing some things. Uh, so I love that sort of thing because I, I find that sort of thing in my environment all the time and yeah, getting out there and being inspired by, by it. In fact, and yes, I'm going to, I'm going to reach down here. I'm going to bring the guitar back in for a moment because I'm being, I'm feeling rather uh, selfish today and I'm liking the, I'm liking the music. So, so what I, um, I, I, I'm going to forget how to play it now. There you go. So w this time last year, uh, part of that song spark group that I was talking about, we were writing songs about summer. Now, if you know anything about Adelaide in June and July, it's not exactly very summery because it's the middle of our winter. So I was trying to write this song about summer, right? I'm sitting here in the studio going, yeah, summertime, 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 yay. And I'm like, I'm just not feeling it. So I went outside, walking around in the rain. Yeah, so still trying to get motivated for summer. And I was just like, ah, oh, only the rain keeps me company sometimes. And I'm just like, ooh, there's a line. That's a lyric. So I'm just like, only the rain keeps me company, falling from high in the sky. And yeah, and I just continue on with this. I'm like frantically writing down like, grey skies are coming. Like it was literally just, it flowed out because... Instead of sitting down and trying to force out a song about summer, I actually just went, you know what? What am I feeling? And what am I trying to portray here? Well, it's that it's that I wish it was summer. So it's, and I wish it was summer, wish it was summer and I was okay. So I'm like, this is the song that I wanted to create and it's what actually flowed out of me. So instead of creating the summer song, I created the anti-summer song, I guess. It wasn't really anti-summer, but it, it came together like that. So again, that's just a, you know, a tip for for doing something a bit differently. Sometimes you can be trying to do one thing and you'll get some like unintended consequences that are actually really positive that can be that take you in a slightly different way. So thank you to Akita Kamasari for that. Uh, the other thing I like to do when I'm out and about is to actually find... I'll put the guitar down. Or again, I'll get tempted to keep playing. Oh. Uh, does anyone else find that guitars where you plug them in the bottom, you can't like stand them up because they sit on the cord and I'm worried that I'm going to snap it off. Anyway, side note, the other thing I like doing is uh, using some found sounds and having some fun out and about. So recently uh, I was lucky enough, I got in touch with uh, someone, I can't remember his name, I'm really sorry, uh, but I'm doing a video on this soon, the Koala Sampler which looks like this. It's a very cool little sampler for iOS if you haven't checked it out. What you can do with this is actually you can record your found sound. You've got a grid here. You've got up to 64 pads here and you can basically just hold down on one of these and if you've got a cool sound out and about, you can hold that down, record the sound and then play it back. You can then sequence it. You can then create beats. You can create loops using your found sound. So GarageBand has a, a sampler as well, but I've just been playing with the Koala sampler and I highly recommend it. Video coming soon spoiler alert uh, but yeah video coming soon here on the channel about the koala sampler but anything you can do even if it's just your voice recorder just sample some of the sounds that are out in your environment and that actual um, song the the start of the song summer which is the one you were listening to there uh, it was I, I then got some sort of found sound so I was, I was walking through the markets here the central markets here in Adelaide and it was just that nice bustling sort of sound and, and I had it and I thought that'd be a great sort of start so if you listen to the song summer and by the way go to petejohns.com and listen to my music there uh, but if you listen to the song summer it has this market sound at the start so it's like this bubbling sort of sound that fades out and then it kicks in with that uh, with that guitar riff that I came up with again as I'm walking around in the rain and Aramacia says, rain is summer, early summer anyway. Sun Ray, welcome, peace from Australia. And Jeff Turner, peace from Adelaide. Yes, um, th those are two folks who would be well aware of the central markets and can probably picture me wandering around the streets of Adelaide in the rain because they've probably done it to themselves. 
Alrighty, uh, I'm just checking to make sure I've been through all of the different tips that we had here. So let's let's recap, shall we? Uh, oh, by the way, Aramis here said something really funny. Not funny, because I do feel bad, but he said allergies is what keeps him in a musical rut. And oh, I, I hear you. And allergies, whether it's allergies, whether it's illness, uh, whether it's a condition that you have, whether it is just energy, just getting the energy to create, those are all real things. And hopefully some of these other tips have helped you find ways to get around that because it doesn't always have to be. Writing and recording music doesn't always have to be sitting in a studio, being really professional and doing everything by the book. It can be in little tiny chunks. And funnily enough, I was I was chatting, you might've seen my interview with Dean Davis at the songwriting studio. And after the interview, we're, we're chatting, we're just sort of shooting it back and forth. And he's like, how, how much time would you say that you, because like me, he, he works and he also does his music work. He's like, okay, I know you work full time. How much time do you actually spend on your videos and your music on Studio Live today? And I'm like, that's a really good question. I couldn't actually put a value on it because especially my music creation, I'll, I'll do blocks of time of two or three hours where I'm literally sitting down and recording. But the majority and the reason I love mobile recording is that the majority of my recording time is in five, 10, 15 minute chunks. And I think that was the revolution. That was the, the aha moment for me is that I used to make excuses because I didn't have an hour to sit down and write music. What I realized is that, you know what I have? I have five minutes while I'm waiting to pick up the kids at school and I have my phone. I have an hour while I'm walking to work and I have my phone. So these are all times where you can be thinking about music, you can be writing music, you can be capturing ideas, and then that is what turns into those complete songs. So find those little windows of time. That's probably another bonus bonus tip is find those windows of time that you can actually start creating and doing things yourself. So there you go. Excuse me. <coughs> I've, uh, I need, I've had my coffee here today. I've actually borrowed uh, my daughter's studio kids today mug. These are custom ones that, uh, that Jasmine designed. Got her name on the back too. Super cute. Mm. Have a little bit of coffee. Alrighty, so that is going to be close to doing it. Let's jump in here and see if we have any other tips in here. Bubba, hello to you. Uh, says, my favorite professor taught me deciding what I'm not going to write before jumping in. There, what you're not going to write. I love that tip. That's something I've never heard and, and have never actually thought of. So what are you, not what are you going to write? What are you not going to write? What's not going to be in your song? I actually really like that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And in this day of age of endless tombers, effects and generator, it makes even more sense. So yeah, it does. So, and that's, I was probably talking earlier in the stream, I was talking about the limitations and doing an eight bar challenge. So doing a, doing a song just in eight bars. And that is really, really cool because it just, it limits you. And again, why I use GarageBand so much? Like people say, Pete, you know there's Aurea Pro, right? You know there's Cubasis. You know there's other DAWs that are much more full featured on your phone, on your iPad. You could use your PC. You've got this set up here. Why don't you use your PC to record? My answer to that is usually that I've tried that and it doesn't work for my workflow. My workflow needs things to be quick, easy, simple, able to capture ideas so that I can move on to the next phase. If I spend a lot of time tweaking things, I get stuck in like analysis paralysis. Anyone else an overthinker? I sure am. And I overthink things to the nth degree. So if I have limitations, it forces my brain to not overthink and it forces me to just get on with it and start creating. So that's why I do that. Um, I've missed a couple here. Valium FM, uh, it's never summer in the UK because it always bloom and rains. Um, yeah, it, it always rains in the UK. Sorry, we're getting a bit off topic, but uh, weather-wise, yeah, I, 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 the way I think of the UK is like it never really rains. It's never aggressive with its rain. It's kind of passive-aggressive. It's always just like puh, puh, puh. But it's like constant. So if you come here to Australia or you go to the tropics, you go to Asia, it's just like, rain, stop, sun. Okay, we're, we're done. Rain's over now. You go to the UK and you're like, okay, so it's been raining for six days and maybe it will stop one day eventually. But the rain is just like, Bleh. it's like unmotivated rain. There you go. That's an idea for a song. Unmotivated rain. That could be the next. Uh, that could be the next fear cut uh, chart topper. Valley method. I know you like uh, goats by fear cut, so maybe that'll be the next fear cut tune. All right, we are we are rambling here. Steve Topher. Hello to you, Steve Topher Music. Go and check out Steve Topher's music. He does amazing stuff over there in New Zealand. Bushwalks, uh, tramping, or listening to the wind, bird stream. Absolutely, this is all good stuff and great tips and great ideas. Uh, ECB TV. Hello to you. Sometimes I take a popular song and modify some of the chords to make it my own. Absolutely. I love doing cover versions of songs and I 
Actually, I was about to play it. I was about to grab the guitar again. Can you tell I'm, I'm a bit itching to play music? I'll probably go and play some music after this. Um, but I do some cover versions of songs that you wouldn't necessarily think would be covered. So some Blink-182 tunes, some Green Day tunes, some Offspring tunes, some of my favourite 90 songs. I've actually acousticified them. So I've changed the key, I've mellowed them out, and they're super fun to play. Uh, and I even played, what did I play? I, I did a cover of Get Lucky by Daft Punk on the piano. And it was very weird and very eclectic. But yeah, if you are stuck in a rut, playing cover song there you go there's another bonus bonus what are we at 17 and a half number tip uh another bonus tip is to play cover songs but make them your own sort of tweak them to get them sounding different and uh yeah you'll be on your way all righty uh thank you everyone uh, Goss Demon says, does my daughter drink coffee? No, she doesn't. She has her hot chocolates in this mug. She doesn't. I'm just borrowing it because I've got another batch of Studio Love Live Today mugs on order, uh, but I've actually given all of mine away <laughs> to other people. Uh, by the way, studiolivetoday.com slash merch if you want your own Studio Live Today mug. Sorry, could not resist. Alrighty, thanks everyone for being here. I think we've got maybe, like I said, 17, 18 points here. If you are watching on the replay or even if you're here live and you think, oh, I've got another great idea, jump back to the video drop a comment let me know what your tips are for creating music and this is the one minute where I tell you a little bit about the things that are going on here on the channel because we've hopefully given you a bit of value if you did get value out of this today please hit the like button that tells me that you had fun that you got some value out of this and that you want me to do more videos like this leave a comment if you want to down below the other places that you can go and check out what I'm doing if you want to be a patron like Brian, who came up with the idea for this this live show, then head over to patreon.com slash Pete Johns for as little as a dollar a month. You can support the channel. You can help me continue creating all the videos, all the stuff I do every day here on Studio Live Today and help you create more music. You can also go to studiolivetoday.com, check out all of the videos there, 100% for free. You can go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear and check out my gear guide if you're in the market for buying some new music recording gear. That is going to do it for today. Thank you for your patience, those that were here live, because I was a little bit late getting on the stream. few technical hiccups to start with, but we got there in the end. Uh, and I will see you on the next video. Take care, folks. Bye.